Welcome to His Home Academy Podcast number two. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. The Limitations and Dangers of Private Schooling. Now, I give this message to make clear that this is not a call to completely ban, restrict, to not consider private schooling. But indeed, to be prayerful about it, if you are a parent or family looking into it, if you are a teacher or administrator of a private school, to please take these things into consideration and address them as the Lord leads you. For, after all, I am an advocate, first and foremost, for homeschooling. But my part-time profession is as a small private school educator. And quite astonishingly so, because, well, all five of these general areas of limitation and danger that I'll be speaking about was for all directions that my small t town Arizona private academy were going towards. And yet there seems to be change of direction and all it took for me was addressing these issues this previous school year. And so now things seem to be, well, pray the Lord, truly on a better trajectory. And if, it's, if, it, if anything, it would be imprudent of me to have stepped down and not continued to help in this correction, in this maturing, and just, you know, really just be a watchman, to be an exhorter. You know, to hold to account, but as well as encourage my brethren as they can, as they, as we, because I say they more so because as a whole, they're full time and I'm part time in this endeavor. But we shall see. We shall see. So, thus, I do not completely discount private schooling. I was, I was, I was in the it was, in college, it was called the Bloomington Christian School, or in Bloomington, California. It's no longer in existence. It closed at the end of 2020 for compli complicated reasons, which I'm not really even sure of, and many of those who supported the school as parents and students aren't really quite sure of it either, unfortunately. Regardless, when I attended back from between 2005 and nine. The first two school years were exemplary. Overall, overall, I, rec I would recommend it. The second two years, due to, in, due to adopting worldly wisdom and thus a pursuit of worldly accomplishment, the school took a drastic turn and nearly closed a handful of years after I graduated high school would limp on and then recover some of his strength, but then, like I said, I'm not too sure. 2020 comes along and it wasn't fully financial. We know that. Or so we've been told. <laughs> we've been informed, although there seems to be ample evidence for that. It wasn't completely for financial reasons, but regardless, it closed. And so thus, thus I do not say this as to slander or to say we'll just drop private schooling altogether but indeed if anything to encourage you to warn you to stay in prayer and be watchful of these limitations and remedy these limitations and steer clear of these dangers because after all here here at a, his home academy podcast our passage is joshua 24 14 15 which reads now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorites. And the Amorites engaged in all kinds of abomination, sexual and murderous, including child sacrifice, in whose land ye dwell. 
but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Hence why I'm full advocate homeschooling. But if you're going to be in, partake in private education, please be well advised in these five things. Let's start off with the something, something uh, basic but still essential, and that's logistics. A strong limitation in regards, to, especially in this, especially in this time that we live in, of apostasy, heresy, and deception. Private schools are not going to be able to logistically meet the demand of truly biblical education, or I mean. Demand for truly biblical education. Now, now will it meet the now? Let me maybe be clear. Clear, maybe rephrase. It'll meet the demand for those who want that. But as far as who want something that's better than, well, public education, which really not good measure stick at all. It's not going to meet it. In fact, there was a. This seems there's been talks from from the school administrator. Sorry, school administrators. And leaders of associations in the private school realm, both Christian and non-Christian, that made it amply clear that the growth of private schools is going to be slow. Private schools in themselves have expanded their numbers, but they haven't multiplied as far as facilities and campuses as quickly. And why? Because the general demand those exiting public school or hoping to get into private education far exceeds. So as a result, we have an issue that as far as biblical private schooling goes, we're not able to train faculty fast enough. We are running out of those amongst the younger generations. I'm a millennial. Millennials and the upcoming Generation Z. So in a short order, within the next five to ten years, we're going to be running thin on God-fearing faculty. On those who are available and willing to commit to this mission. So be mindful of that as far as how that's going to work in the long term. So that hence why for me, homeschooling logistically will be much more with a strong possibility if you want full on biblical edu you know, education. And then there's time. The reality is that homeschooling is beats just the just the sheer efficiency of the use of time. The elementary ele homeschool elementary education lower, so K through third. Realistically, I'm being honest with you. You can ask anybody who's done this. You can oh, schooling, and that includes homework, aka practice of the lessons. All of it can be accomplished two to, in two to three hours. Two to three hours. Upper elementary, four through six, basically another hour. Junior high, another hour. And high school, an additional hour. So with that said, at most, we're talking about six hours. So by time is at most six hours overall. So between starting at 8 a.m. and ending at 2, 2.30, done. With everything, including AK homework. And as I just said, it's, there's, a, there's an hour range for each one. So it could be an hour less. So that's the thing, is, and and I reason why I bring it up, and why because families are limited in how much time that they can you know devote, and I see that in my own, I see that in my own private school is uh, we've had to a lot of people step down or just let them go because they couldn't they could not because of their lifestyles and nothing against their lifestyles at all. That's not the point. Is they were unable to participate well enough to make to make their time at the school worthwhile for their students in the long term. 
to the point where it's like even I'm thinking like they should just homeschool or some or something. I mean, it's because it's it's just not. I don't know why they're paying tuition or maybe they got full scholarships. I, I'm not sure about everybody's financial situation, but reality is it just wasn't fruitful. So they, they so they weren't willing to so they weren't willing or and or able to commit to the time that it takes and can that be mitigated within the institution perhaps but sometimes it really can't i mean and that's something for all private schools to look into and for both limitation both issues but as far as i'm concerned parents faculty wise parents can with the right resources and, and community and prayer trust in the lord oh yeah you can raise your children to be college level if if he so chooses it's it is possible it is plausible my dear listeners next up is uh there's the covenant versus evangelism aspect and this is what i mean is that private schools are generally either covenant based which fewer of them are becoming meaning that at least one parent rule of minimum one parent has to be a professing believer attending a regular a church regularly and also include and also have also have a reference from a pastor thus you generally thus so there's a and there's generally a you know really it's generally a christian community more or less versus the evangelistic model would be well families just don't have to profess or claim to be of any faith or religion once or any or they can be this and or for a lot of times they can be of any religion so you can have you can also have uh, mormons roman catholics muslim sikhs even uh even there's been quite a number of new agers and spiritualists too who attend schools as well so so that's the thing is that's gonna lead to another point five later on but so you have these two you have these two things that you have to take into consideration whether how do you do you may do you initiate being in a covenantal institution and how do you faithfully nourish that and if you're going to go to an evangelistic model are you ready for and let me tell you something and if you're already going through this now you need to address it there's going to be a much there's going to be a more fluid just just i mean just sinful culture it's going to be just seem more natural because you're because you're going to have non-believers in large number if not majority in your school and there's no telling the influences that that's going to have on the believing students and there's no telling and there's no telling i and i've and i've been with the this is my fifth year at my private academy with small numbers and much growth fluctuating fluctuation in demographics when it comes to faith identity and let me tell you something it's uh, it can get pretty ugly and if it's getting ugly you need to address it asap and that includes that includes a low tolerance for violation of rules policies and definitely uh, local state and federal laws Just going to leave it at that because everybody's different situation, but you need to address it or else you shouldn't have a school. Number three, the associations. Associations can be a blessing. They can also be a curse. Associations can definitely hold you to admirable standards, just well-needed you know, accountability, and even just just great source a great line of community and resources but they can also be a source of apostasy of foolishness of deception if not just utter wickedness and you know and evil i've already talked about in previous talks longer my longer work about the acsi association for christian schools international who are partnered with the church of england schools and then there's also cardis which is based over in canada 
you may be doubtful about the well, the questionable theology and practices of the ACSI, but all you got to do is look at the vision and educational statements of the Church of England and Cardis, who are there. They fellowship with them. like They, they work side by side with them for long-term, worldwide development. And you'll see where the ACSI is heading, and that's towards a toleration of, well, basically, Antichrist doctrine, aka that which is in opposition to the, to the scriptures, including, including, a, including a, a open tolerance to sodomy, if not abortion, along with, Lord knows, anything that comes from the vain, wicked imaginations of men. As long as the ACSI is associated with the Church of England and Cardis and, and whoever is like-minded as them, that's where that's where American Christian education on a large scale is going to be sliding towards. So look into that. Check out their websites. Check, check out their vision and education statements. You'll see for for yourself. Church of England, Cardis. That ties into uh, point five as well. But before we get to that, let's go to point number four. That's going to be classical temptations. So this this is in regards to uh, the classical Christian uh, edu education movement. And a very large one is ACCS, Association of Christian, of Christian uh, Classical Christian Schools, sorry. ACCS, ACCS, Association of Classical Christian Schools. There's also the CSI, Classical Schools, Inter Inter you know, International, and a few others. I think there's also another one that, that's the... Uh, forget what it is, but it's, but it's a university. You can look into it. It's a Christian university. It's an association of Christian university schools, meaning... And it's the university model. You may want to look into this. This is also an option. But just like private education exercise just, you know, discernment in that you, the university model and it's also known as the hybrid model is where you is where half the time half the time or most of the time you homeschool and then half to part time private school so it's so a rule of thumb is you Homeschool Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and you go to an actual campus, teachers, classrooms, Tuesday and Thursday, or maybe flipped the other way around. Like I said, it depends. But for most of them, you only go to school twice a week. So, yeah, so there's that as well. But regardless, again, a number of those are classical or quote unquote traditional, as in it's just regular, standard, whatever you want to call it. Now, the key thing with classical temptations that I speak of is classical schools go into, well, the classics from the ancient to, the, to, to, uh, to modern times. And I say temptations because I've done three videos, three long ones, three long talks about the potential pitfalls, if not evils that classical education can get itself in, you know, in, in, you know, enraptured in, can be infected and led astray by. And I've made those videos, once again, not to just completely lead people away from classical ed education. But for them, if you're looking into it, prayerful, discerning. If you are a classical educator, prayerful, discerning. Everybody's that I'm, everything that I'm addressing is my hope and prayer is that, well, it's dealt with according to the word of the Lord and in the, in the power, comfort, and guidance of, of His Holy Spirit. Because I want everybody in the, within the church, whether it be homeschooling, standard, standard private school, classical education, hybrid, slash university model education, I want you to succeed. So micro schools, co-ops, whatever it may be. If you are desiring truly biblical, our Lord raising your children 
in the admonition and the fear and the love of the Lord God for his righteousness sake. Remember Joshua 24, 14, 15. Then God speed to you, and I pray for your success. In his name for your glory. Sorry, <laughs> for his glory. And let's face it, his glory is our glory because... No, but, and, that's, and that's what these temptations you know, refer to, actually, is, is, is that when his glory is not our glory, when it actually gets flipped around, this can apply to regular associations as well, but it's, I'd say it's easier because there can be that temptation of, first off, yeah, too highly valuing the classics, especially from heathen writers, those who oppose Christ. A through Z, atheist to Zoroastrians. Because there's, I have, I have, a, I have a, just a say, statement, there's a difference between learning from and learning about. If you're learning about Plato and Aristotle, John Locke, Thomas Aquinas, Frederick Nietzsche, Sigmund Freud, Karl Marx <laughs> was a big one, right? Karl Marx, um, Milton Friedman. There's also there's also uh, Thomas Sowell, yeah, Thomas Sowell, wh whoever it is, whoever it is. If you're learning about them, well, by all means, it's good to be aware. But if you're learning from them, as if they possess wisdom that is, and you can you can you can quote all you want. Well, all truth is God's truth. Yeah, except the truth that they're stating is not said for and in the name of the truth. The Logos, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So you have to be careful. That you're learning from them. That you're not learning from them. Let me be clear. Let me make sure I don't, make sure I don't cause any confusion here. That you are learning about them and not from them. Worldly wisdom, as you desire, desire worldly things. And that's a big pitfall for a number of those in the classical schools, is that they have more of a tendency to blindly justify pursuing worldly accomplishment, worldly wealth, worldly gain, in the name of heavenly kingdom work. Some, yeah, I agree with you. You do need, you do need finite materials. The Lord does bless us and give us those things for a reason. But be careful that you are not acquiring more and acquiring them in the means of which is not according. That is not from His Word, but it turns out to be from the quote unquote truthful words. Of those who are antichrist, those who do not recognize the sovereignty of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, it is a subtle, slippery slope to error, if not apostasy. So, press on, Christ. Those of you who are in classical education and support it. I said, God speed to you. I, I pray for your success. And remember, your success is the honor, the fear, and love of our Lord. Above everything else, and you must be willing. I and you, brethren, must be willing to give up the things of this world. It's, it's to show the world the integrity of his word. That we're willing to lose everything on this side of heaven because we have so much to gain. To live is Christ, to be like Christ, to die is gain, the true gain that this world can, cannot offer us.
and not offer our children, our offspring, the future generations to come. And lastly, the last, there's first part is a limitation, the second part is the, is the danger. Ecumenism. The limitation of Christian ecumenism is that when you have so many churches being represented at a Christian school, well, then you, in order to maintain the attendance of so many different churches, in fact, uh, just recently, early this week, got done with professional development, so faculty, teacher, and service training, and the representative, and it was, you know, it was a blessing overall. Of course, a few things he said where it's like, yep, that's, that's definitely, that's definitely one thing that homeschooling has over private schooling for sure is Christian ecumenism. When you have a school that in his case represents over 70 churches, then by default to maintain attendance, you have to, well, be very choosy and restrictive about the theological points that you promote on your campus. So thereby this thing called majoring in the majors and not the minors. Meaning that, well, then you don't really... So by default, you got things such as eschatology, so anything about the end times usually just becoming, well, whatever, it's, that's usually just completely thrown out, you know, thrown out, it's not like it doesn't exist, it's not like you don't talk about it at all, it's just you just don't really t go over it too much, in fact, I would say that when you look at a lot of apologetics, and that's the problem with a, with a lot of apologetics and New Testament survey courses, they don't really delve too well in eschatology so the books of daniel ezekiel revelation they don't get they don't get to do justice because you have to take a theo, you have to take an eschatological position you know pre-millennial post amil you know if there's a rapture or not pre-trib mid post you know what i'm saying it's so there's that amongst few other miscellaneous things but then it can easily slide into not really taking too strong of a position on the nature of Genesis. So, usually, like I said, towards the end, no pun intended, and times material gets, comes, come, becomes more of a, becomes, you know, becomes more a, becomes more of a taboo, and then they, but that can easily slide over into Genesis, to, into the origins. So as a result, you have a rather incomplete gospel. Because it's not just a matter of, oh, now you're saved. Okay, but what led up to being saved? What was Jesus' doctrine when he offers salvation? And what is the what does that future of salvation hold? Especially in eternity. Well then, yeah. So there's that limitation. But really, the key thing is the danger is interfaith ecumenism, which is becoming a greater trend amongst private schools, like I said, especially those similar to or associated with the ACSI, Church of England, and CARDIS, which is a complete violation, well, of our standing passage, Joshua 24, 14, 15, here at his home academy. Yeah, literally where you just, yeah, there is no desire to convert. There is no need of salvation. In fact, if anything, yeah, we're all serving the same God according to this mode of, mode of thought amongst Christian schools. And it is expanding. So, be prayerful, be discerning. I advocate homeschooling, but once again, if you're in private, classical, university model, co-ops, wherever it may be, be prayerful and discern. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. This is Christian M.C. Fulmer, 
signing out.